by AFI Karkara. It's my pleasure to invite Dr. Ravi Prasad Hegde, sir, President AFI Karkara, to welcome the gathering. Over to you, sir. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, happy Indian New Year to all. So it's my pleasure to welcome uh, today's guest speaker, uh, Dr. Arjun Ballar, uh, to today's uh, webinar. Welcome, you, sir. And I welcome you, all the uh, respected members of AFI Karkada. Welcome you all. And I welcome all the teaching faculties and the students from Alva Ayurveda Medical College, Murubide. And at the last, I welcome each and everybody. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Now I would like to invite Dr. Prashant Jain, sir, to have a brief introduction about today's speaker. Over to you, sir. Good evening, dear doctors. It gives me immense pleasure to introduce esteemed guest speaker for today's Dr. Arjun Ballal, sir. He is a son of Dr. N. Vijay Ballal, Ambalpadi. Completed his MBBS degree from KMC Mangalore in the year 2009. After completion of MBBS for two years, he worked with his father at Ballal's clinic, Santakate. Completed his post-graduation in orthopedics as a topper of the batch from Nitte University in the year 2015. In the year 2016, he worked as a registrar in the Department of Orthopedic Surgery, ARS Hospital, Tirupur, Tamil Nadu. He has published various articles in national and international journals. He is also associate editor, BMC Surgery. He is also a reviewer of more than 20 plus journals. Presently, he is consulting orthopedic surgeon at UDP and also he visits our Alva Cell Center. Today, he is going to share his expertise on the management of aches and pain in elderly. I hold wholeheartedly welcome you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. I kindly request all the participants to mute your audio for better connectivity and please do ask your questions directly to the speaker by unmuting your audio at the end of the session. Thank you. Now, it's my immense pleasure to call out today's speaker, Dr. Arjun Barlal, sir, to share his valuable knowledge with us. Over to you, sir. So, good evening, one and all. I hope everybody can hear me. Uh, yes, sir. Okay. Good evening, one and all. First of all, I would start with uh, wishing all of you a very happy 75th Independence Day. I thank Ravi Prasad, sir, and AFI Karkala to give me this opportunity to be presenting this important topic in our day-to-day -day practice, in our day-to-day uh, -day, you know, outpatient departments, what we see almost on a daily basis. As most of the doctors in this group are general practitioners, some are surgeons and physicians, I am 100% sure that you will definitely see enough of uh, aches and pains and enough of elderly people in your daily practice, apart from the other uh, important uh, things you come across. So I will start off with the PowerPoint presentation now so that it becomes all of you can see the PPT. Hello, yes, sir. One second, one second. This connectivity issue. Just give me one minute. It'd be easier for me to present with the PPT rather than just me. He's speaking monotonously. Just give me one, one minute. Can you see the PPT? Yes, sir. It's visible. All of you, all of you can see, right? Yes, sir. Okay. So management of aches and pains in the elderly is today's important topic. So first of all, before that, I would thank Prashant Jain, sir, for introducing me well. I would just like to put a brief uh, uh, introduction of myself. I'm Dr. Arjun Ballar. Apart from being an operative orthopedic surgeon, I'm also a reviewer and editor in several national and international journals. Also, I have received two Poblon gold medals in 2019. So what are the important uh, you know, patients we come across, especially amongst the elderly age group? Or rather, what are the most important pains we come across in our day-to-day -day practice? Let me go step by step, system by system, so that it becomes easy for everybody. 
and we'll come across some of the most common uh, diagnoses we come across and some of the rare diagnoses we can come across. First of all, neck and low back pain. I'm 100% sure almost every day we see this on a daily break, uh, daily basis. So what can be the causes of such uh, symptoms or such clinical signs in these particular patients? The most common cause is arthritis, which is one of the most uh, process important uh, aging process that happens in everybody. Discogenic disorders, especially degenerated discs or disc prolapse. Trauma due to history of fall or underlying cancers or any other systemic conditions. Occasionally tumors, especially now incidence of tumors have increased because of the abuse of alcohol and uh, uh, tobacco consumption has increased amongst our population. Very rarely spinal infections. Tuberculosis at one time was one of the most important cause of back pain in Indian population. But now due to the uh, advancements in the management of tuberculosis, the luckily the inf spinal infections or the pot spine incidences have gone down. Myofascial pain syndrome that is especially due to improper posturing, improper seating patterns, improper standing patterns and all those things. You can have myofascial pain syndromes where you can have uh, issues with back pain, especially due to a spasm of the paraspinal muscles. So now, now this is one of the commonest x-rays we come across. Whenever you have a patient with a spine pain, the lateral x-ray is more important than an anterior posterior x-ray. Now, what do you see in this x-ray? Can you see the upper arrow? It's written as spur of the bone. And below that, the lower one showing narrowing of the disc. Now, I'm sorry, I don't have an arrow here. One second, can we? Yeah. Try to push the arrow that side. Now, when you see here, can you? Can everybody see the arrow over there on the picture? Yes, yeah. Now, when you see that, you can see that there is a rectangular vertebral bone over there. And the black space in between those two bones, the black space has to be of equal length between each of the vertebrae. As you come down, you can see that the black space in between these two bones, that's about C5, C6, is reduced. So that is the first indicator in saying that patient is having a disc problem. And then you can see the ends of each of the lower vertebrae where the arrows have been shown there is basically more sharp as compared to that of the other vertebrae. Now, why is that? That is because whenever you have a disc problem, you naturally have got the body responding to it by producing extra bone. That is what we call as osteophyte or what we call as a spur. It happens all around the body. As we go ahead into different joints, I'm sure you will come across enough of these x-rays where you can see spurs, where you can see narrowing of space. So the spur is actually a reactive phenomenon to the degeneration, what has already happened. So the narrowing of the disc and spur, these two are important indicators that the patient has got an arthritis of the vertebral column. So this what happens is, see, the disc is basically the shock absorber of the body. That's when exactly the water, primarily its content is water. So what happens as the patient grows old or a person grows old, the water starts disappearing due to the age-related process. And that then protrudes from between the vertebral column and, pres and presses on the spine, producing symptoms. What are the symptoms? More than kekilvene, they will tell, kai vaitilaka apundu, kai juma juma varpundu, ratri jepparaya apuji. These are more of a common symptom than neck pain itself. So whenever a patient presents with an upper limb issue, it is not necessarily that it is the shoulder that is affected or the neck or the um, wrist or the elbow is affected. It's always important to screen for the neck. Next, when you come here, you can see now this white arrows, you can see around a huge central mass. Now that is basically a tumor. So what is important is whenever you get an X-ray for any particular patient, it is essential that you are able to diagnose as to what is uh, normal and what is not. Whenever we have a finding like this, where you see some kind of a mass presenting on the spine, it could be a tumor. So we will have to evaluate to do a MRI or CT scan or whatever that is required accordingly. Now in this X-ray, you can see this is more of an MRI scan. Now you can follow the arrow. In the arrow, you can see that here. Can you see the vertebral column is not continuous? There's a little bit of displacement of this and this has gone back and pressed on the spine. Everybody can see the arrow, I hope. So as far as this, you can see that that is the spinal cord, the river like thing over there. So that this is broken and this vertebral column is going and pressing on that. This is due to trauma. It is a fracture dislocation. Now, this is a dangerous phenomenon because it can it is very notorious to produce paraplegia, 
very notorious to produce bowel bladder complaints very notorious to produce lot of life threatening complications if this happens at the cervical spine there are patients those who died on spot so whenever you tell that you know on spot ali satoda spot ali satoda very rarely happens due to brain injury it happens due to spine injury especially in indian judicial system where there is death by hanging that they take advantage of the point that as soon as the patient is immediately released from the neck and is dropped downwards it is not exactly the strangulation that produces death but it is the fracture dislocation of the cervical spine that produces death so this is a very dangerous phenomenon so it is very essential that you know elderly people are more predisposed to such injuries basically because they have very poor bone content that is they have a lot lot amount of osteoporosis so this is an important uh, thing what has to be looked for now this mri and the ct scan you can see in the last image you can see all those white arrows i'm sorry my screen arrow is not very clear now you can see this area over here that is you can see that the disc is completely destroyed these black areas what you see here are basically the discs please follow my arrow okay you can see that that is the disc and this in between the disc one second i'm sorry for that in between the disc you see this little light shade area that is the vertebral column or the vertebral bone this more clearer here okay and below that that is the disc what you can see in this lower area is there is the disc is destroyed the vertebral column is eaten up this basically happens when there is a bacterial infection or probably a tuberculosis of the spine that's when you know the entire vertebral column and the disc and everything is destroyed and produces a condition called discitis or infection of the disc okay so these are basically the radiological investigations or the radiological clues which basically tell what could be wrong or what could be right in the patient so what could be the management see the first step of management what we usually do is give cervical collars to the patient cervical collars basically come as a hard cervical collar what you can see in image number 1 or a soft cervical collar something like that the soft cervical collar is more of a uh, what do you say it's more of a placebo that is in the sense you just tell the patient that you have got cervical problems so you use a soft cervical collar the hard cervical collar is a primarily the one that is used in cases of trauma or injuries basically to stabilize the spine and to assure that the spine does not move out of place then there are something called epidural injections where we inject a steroid directly into the epidural space of the spine which basically reduces the pain and then surgeries of the spine are reserved only in cases there is a life threatening complication or there is any form of a significant motor deficits that is as presence of bowel bladder loss and several other such complications the first phase of therapy anyway involves use of injections and oral medications and physiotherapy the second stage we can use the epidural injections and in case there is something like a tb spine or some infectious process or there is a tumor then you can think about surgery next we move into the shoulder pain what causes shoulder pain in the elderly case of a rotator cuff tendinitis that is a degeneration of the rotator cuff and uh, shoulder issues subacromial impingement frozen shoulder and acromioclavicular joint arthritis see rotator cuff tendinitis is this is the rotator cuff which is the basic stabilizer of the elbow of the of the shoulder whenever you have got any destruction of the rotator cuff or any degeneration of the rotator cuff especially in old older age group due to significant trauma there will be some amount of rotator cuff degeneration which is one of the most common cause of shoulder pain the second one is impingement impingement anta helidre in between the acromion and the see between the acromion and the humerus there is a space that is called the subacromial space e space kammi agidre usually kelavurige by birth kammi irutte kelavurige old age aadmel kammi agutte then it produces some kind of kind of an impingement so adu kuda is an important cause for shoulder pain then there is the arthritis same problem you see there is a reduced space between the acromioclavicular joint the distance between the humerus and the glenoid is reduced as well as you can see there is reduced space between the humerus and the acromion i hope everybody can look at these x rays and appreciate the findings so then there is destruction so when a, this is the most common cause of pain in the elderly especially degeneration and then in diabetics adhesive capsulitis or periarthritis your shoulder sutta iro mamsa pattigalu mamsa kandagalu ivella degenerate agi destroy agi adellella neer tumkondu ee tara adhesive capsulitis avrige especially en helthare doctor kai attakagalla seere hakolakagalla 
ಕೂದಲು ಬಾಚಕ್ಕೆ ಕಷ್ಟ ಆಗುತ್ತೆ ಕೈ ಹಿಂದ್ಗಡೆ ತಕೊಂಡು ಹೋಗಕ್ಕಾಗಲ್ಲ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ದರ್ ಇಸ್ ಸಿಗ್ನಿಫಿಕೆಂಟ್ ಲಿಮಿಟೇಷನ್ ಆಫ್ ಇಂಟರ್ನಲ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಟರ್ನಲ್ ರೊಟೇಷನ್ ಸೊ ವೆನ್ ಎವರ್ ಯು ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಸಿಗ್ನಿಫಿಕೆಂಟ್ ಡಿ ಜನರೇಷನ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಸಿಗ್ನಿಫಿಕೆಂಟ್ ಡಿಫಿಕಲ್ಟಿ ಇನ್ ಮೂಮೆಂಟ್ ದ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಹಿಸ್ಟ್ರಿ ಯು ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಟು ಆಸ್ಕ್ ನಿಮಗೆ ಡಯಾಬಿಟೀಸ್ ಇದೆಯಾ ಇಲ್ಲ ಡಾಕ್ಟ್ರೆ ನಮಗೆ ಡಯಾಬಿಟೀಸ್ ಇಲ್ಲ ದಟ್ಸ್ ವಾಟ್ ಏಟಿ ಪರ್ಸೆಂಟ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಪೀಪಲ್ ವಿಲ್ ಟೆಲ್ ವಾಟ್ ಐ ವುಡ್ ಸಜೆಸ್ಟ್ ಎವ್ರಿಬಡಿ ದಟ್ ಈ ತರ ಸಿಂಪ್ಟಮ್ಸ್ ಏನಾದರೂ ಹೇಳಿದ್ರೆ ಒಂದು ಜಿ ಆರ್ ಬಿ ಎಸ್ ನಿಮ್ ಕ್ಲಿನಿಕ್ ಅಲ್ಲೇ ಮಾಡಿ ಅರೌಂಡ್ ನೈಂಟಿ ಪರ್ಸೆಂಟ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿಸ್ ಏಟಿ ಪರ್ಸೆಂಟ್ ವಿಲ್ ಬಿ ಅನ್ನೋನ್ ಡಯಾಬಿಟಿಕ್ಸ್ ಅವರಿಗೆ ಡಯಾಬಿಟೀಸ್ ಡಯಗ್ನೋಸ್ ಆಗಿರಲ್ಲ ಅಥವಾ ಟೆಸ್ಟ್ ಮಾಡಿರಲ್ಲ ಅವರಿಗೆ ಡಯಾಬಿಟೀಸ್ ಇಲ್ಲ ಅಂತ ತಿಳ್ಕೊಂಡಿರ್ತಾರೆ ಬಟ್ ದೇ ವಿಲ್ ಬಿ ಅನ್ನೋನ್ ಡಯಾಬಿಟಿಕ್ಸ್ ಸೊ ದ ಮೇನ್ ಸ್ಟೇ ಆಫ್ ದಿಸ್ ಡಯಗ್ನೋಸಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಯು ವಿಲ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಟು ಸಿ ಎಸ್ಪೆಷಲಿ ಪೆರಿ ಆರ್ಥರೈಟಿಸ್ ಸಿಂಪ್ಟಮ್ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಮೋರ್ ದನ್ ಎನಿ ಅದರ್ ಫಾರ್ಮ್ ಆಫ್ ಆರ್ಥರೈಟಿಸ್ ಪೆರಿ ಆರ್ಥರೈಟಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ವೆರಿ ವೆರಿ ಪ್ರಿವಲೆಂಟ್ ಇನ್ ಇಂಡಿಯಾ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಇಂಡಿಯಾ ಇಸ್ ದ ಡಯಾಬಿಟಿಕ್ ಕ್ಯಾಪಿಟಲ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ವರ್ಲ್ಡ್ ಸಿನ್ಸ್ ಐ ಎಮ್ ರೆಗ್ಯುಲರ್ ವಿಸಿಟರ್ ಆಸ್ ಪ್ರಶಾಂತ್ ಜೈನ್ ಸರ್ ಟೋಲ್ ಟು ಮೂಡ್ಬಿದ್ರೆ ಅಸ್ ವೆಲ್ ಆಸ್ ಇನ್ ಉಡುಪಿ ಇನ್ ಬೋತ್ ದ ಪಾಪ್ಯುಲೇಷನ್ ಹಿಯರ್ ವಿ ಹವ್ ಇನ್ಫ್ ಪೇಷೆಂಟ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ಅವರ್ ಔಟ್ ಪೇಷೆಂಟ್ ಡಿಪಾರ್ಟ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಟು ಪ್ರೆಸೆಂಟ್ ವಿತ್ ಅಸಿವ್ ಕ್ಯಾಪ್ಸುಲೈಟಿಸ್ ದೋಸ್ ಕ್ಲೇಮ್ ದಟ್ ದೇ ಆರ್ ನಾಟ್ ಡಯಾಬಿಟಿಕ್ಸ್ ಬಟ್ ದೇ ಹವ್ ಬೀನ್ ಡಯಗ್ನೋಸ್ಡ್ ಇನ್ ದಿ ಔಟ್ ಪೇಷೆಂಟ್ ಆಫ್ಟರ್ ಚೆಕಿಂಗ್ ಫಾರ್ ದರ್ ಶುಗರ್ಸ್ ಸೊ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಅ ವೆರಿ ಇಂಪಾರ್ಟೆಂಟ್ ಥಿಂಗ್ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಒನ್ ಇಂಪಾರ್ಟೆಂಟ್ ಫೈಂಡಿಂಗ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಆಫ್ ಕೋರ್ಸ್ ಹಿಯರ್ಲಿ ರೊಟೇಟರ್ ಕಫ್ ಟೇರ್ ಅಂತೀವಿ ಏನು ರೊಟೇಟರ್ ಕಫ್ ಆಸ್ ಯು ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಸಿ ಇನ್ ದಿಸ್ ಲಾಸ್ಟ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ರೇ ದಿ ಗ್ಯಾಪ್ ಬಿಟ್ವೀನ್ ದಿ ಹ್ಯೂಮ್ ಹ್ಯೂಮರಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ದಿ ದಿಸ್ ಒನ್ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಯು ಸಿ ದಿಸ್ ಅಕ್ರೋಮಿ ಆನ್ ಹ್ಯೂಮರಸ್ ಮಧ್ಯದಲ್ಲಿ ಈ ತರ ಗ್ಯಾಪ್ ಇರಬೇಕು ವೈರಸ್ ಇನ್ ದ ನೆಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ ಯು ಆರ್ ಸೀನ್ ಗ್ಯಾಪ್ ಇಲ್ಲ ದ ಹ್ಯೂಮರಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಮೈಗ್ರೇಟೆಡ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಹಿಟ್ಟಿಂಗ್ ಹಿಟ್ಟಿಂಗ್ ದಿ ಅಕ್ರೋಮಿ ಅಂದ್ರೆ ಏನಾಗಿದೆ ರೊಟೇಟರ್ ಕಫ್ ಹರ್ದೋಗಿದೆ ರೊಟೇಟರ್ ಕಫ್ ಇಸ್ ರೆಸ್ಪಾನ್ಸಿಬಲ್ ಫಾರ್ ಹೋಲ್ಡಿಂಗ್ ದ ಹ್ಯೂಮರಸ್ ಡೌನ್ So when that is stone, naturally the humerus slides up. So when you have an x-ray like this, where the humerus is going and hitting on the acromion, then 99% rotator cuff injury is there. This will usually present with history of trauma. One year ago, it was a long time ago. It was a long time ago. It was a long time ago. But that does not mean you should not look for sugars. Shoulder pain is a predominant complication of diabetes. Shoulder, uh, the predominant complication of hypertension. in management to of course you have got the medications and the injections in the first stage physiotherapy is very useful in these patients the important thing what i usually prefer in patients those who don't relieve themselves with medications or with physiotherapy is by injecting intra articular injections intra articular injections andre we inject about 5 cc of lignocaine with corticosteroid or lignocaine with something called purified uh, platelet rich plasma or prp where we take the blood from the patient we purify it by means of a centrifuge and inject into the shoulder that reduces the disease process as well as brings about good relief in the patients we have got shoulder arthroscopy wherein we push in with cosmetic small incisions we push in probes like that into the shoulder and those probes will basically give us an idea as to what is wrong and accordingly if the rotator cuff is torn we'll repair the rotator cuff in case we have got uh, you know capsular tightening we release the capsular area whatever the pathology is can be corrected surgically in severely degenerated shoulders we do something called arthroplasty and the joint replacement now again martivi in telidu now there are two images you can see in this last photo here i hope you can follow the arrow in this one is called as total shoulder arthroplasty andre ee humeral head annu cut maadi tegitivi glenoid annu cut maadi tegitivi glenoid alli we put this polyethylene or plastic liner and we put a metal humeral head then there is something called a reverse shoulder andre yenu ee glenoid annu we convert into a ball and the humerus we convert it into a socket now as regular shoulder is as you all know shoulder is a ball and socket joint the humerus is the ball the glenoid is the socket but when we do a reverse shoulder the glenoid is the ball and the humerus is a socket this is basically done in patients with lot of destruction of rotator cuff so that we reverse the action of the shoulder and we have got very good results in these patients next is the elbow pain golfer's elbow golfer's elbow andre medial epicondylitis osteoarthritis
tennis elbow in this patient. Sachin Tendulkar was a victim of tennis elbow. Elbow osteoarthritis. Again, degeneration, destruction, osteophytes, elbow osteoarthritis, age-related problem. Now that you can see the red arrow in the last image, that is a stress fracture. Especially elderly age group, only tumba bone weak erodrin. The sun sun wound sali and agate stress fracture. It's an incomplete fracture. Incomplete under the fracture line is not extending completely to the other cortex. It's only present on one small area of the bone. So that is a stress fracture. So whenever you get an x ray, you have to look for stress fractures. You have to look for arthritis. And e golfer's elbow, tennis elbow, x ray diagnosed mada kagala. They are diagnosed primarily clinically. So, yen maad bahudu, intra-articular injections, especially for golfers and tennis elbow, it is useful, not for stress fractures. Medicines, they are primarily the same stay that happens for everybody. Elbow arthroscopy, same procedure where we push in the scopes inside, look into the joint, yen degenerate agide, yen destroy agide, adhanella correct maadodu. Finally, replacement, where we replace the bones by means of this metal prosthesis. So once you replace it with the metal processes, you can see that the patient has significant improvement. Although elbow replacement is not very common in India, uh, it's not done by every all the surgeons who are there. Wrist and hand pain, osteoarthritis, dequivalence disease, inflammatory arthritis, fractures, and carpal tunnel syndrome. Now that is basically the fractures. Fractures are very common in elderly. Kankansala. Uh, fall on an outstretched hand and the they end up can you see this first image here the patient has fall with an outstretched hand other reverse position either a flex then you have something called smith fracture anyway that's not important but either a fall on an outstretched hand is a finding that you call as the distal radius fracture the distal radius fracture is the most common trauma injury any orthopedician, any general practitioner or even any physician or sometimes even surgeons view in their regular practice. They almost even today I had two or three patients who have sustained hypertension, diabetes, hypoglycemia episodes. First thing what you do is you give your hand to the ground. So when you give your hand to the ground, you end up having the fracture of the distal radius. A very common injury what happens due to trauma. Second one is something that we call a dequivalence disease. Now you can see that, uh, one second, yeah. Now you can see that white sheath over there. This white sheath, what you're seeing in the arrow is basically the ligament which is responsible for holding two tendons. That is the extensor pollicis brevis and abductor pollicis longus. So those are basically the ligaments of the, one second, yeah, that is where exactly, how do these patients present, these patients present, screwdriver heavy bucket shake hand madakagala. Pen hidkola kagala. These are the complaints the patient usually comes. Our Yavaglu no viratan thalala. Namgeno no villa doctor. Other bucket at the Kulan overte. But the Hindu Kulan overte. Kai Uri at the Kulan overte. These are the complaints they present. So, how do you diagnose it? No. Yeah. Put your, put, make the patient thumb press inside like that. And then ask them to make a fist. And Make the patient do that. You can assist them to do that. When you do that, they will be in intense pain. There will be a lot of pain. They will tell that there is a lot of pain. That pain, this test is called as the Finkelstein's test. It is the diagnostic test. There is no need of any X-ray or ultrasound. Just do this test. Patient has got decurrence disease. That means it has to be treated for decurrence disease and it is 100% nothing else. Now you can see this x-ray is clearly, this image is showing us. One thing is osteoarthritis of the wrist and then inflammatory arthritis such as rheumatoid arthritis, psoriatic arthritis, some skin lesions. So when you're having a patient with multiple joint pains, wrist pain, finger pain, ankle pain, back pain, you will have to see for some skin lesions. That is psoriatic arthritis. 
and most importantly do a test for the uric acid so whenever the gout or something like that is high uric acid is high patient will have multiple joint pains it need not necessarily be calcium deficiency it could be any of these conditions carpal tunnel syndrome carpal tunnel andre in the hand this area this is the carpus or where the carpal bones are i hope everybody knows the mnemonic of she looks too pretty so this is where exactly the carpal bones are there is a carpal ligament or the transverse carpal ligament under which the median nerve passes the median nerve median nerve is responsible for supply sensory supply to the thumb the index finger the middle finger and half of the ring finger 1 2 3 and a half digits so the sensory supply will be here to the entire thenar eminence apart from adductor pollicis it supplies all these areas over here so whenever a patient has an inflamed or a degenerated transverse carpal ligament patient will complain of tingling numbness in these three and a half digits along with difficulty of putting a thread into the needle nanage thread idkondu needle olagade hakakagalla holige madakagalla pen idkolakagalla they will complain about fine activities ratri malkondaga vipreeta nov barutte ಇಡೀ ದಿನ ಕೆಲಸ ಮಾಡುವಾಗ ಏನು ತೊಂದರೆ ಇರಲ್ಲ ರಾತ್ರಿ ಮಲ್ಕೊಂಡಾಗ ನೋವು ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟ್ ಆಗುತ್ತೆ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಒನ್ ಕಂಪ್ಲೇಂಟ್ ಬೇಸಿಕಲಿ ಕಂಪ್ಲೇಂಟ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಹೌ ಡು ಯು ಕ್ಲಿನಿಕಲಿ ಅಸೆಸ್ ಇಟ್ do something called as a tinnels test t i n i l ee tara median nerve course barod illi if you can see in the picture here one second yeah just tap on this area over the zone of the median nerve right at the center of the palm or anatomically nododidre radial border of the ring finger illi tap maadi patient will complain of worsening of symptoms or sarpa tingling numbness ide antare illa andre patient ge inverse prayer sign andre kaiyanna ee tara maadkond hidkolak heli for 5 minutes they immediately tell thumba jaasti aagibittide novu thumba jaasti aagta ide current shock hodadaga agutte these are the basic complaints of carpal tunnel syndrome this is another important thing that you can see in these patients and of course rheumatoid arthritis idantu ellru nodirtare where you have got such degeneration and destruction of the joint producing such deformities what you can see in the image maybe boutonniere ulnar deviations van neck ella deformities so that idantu clinically nodudkolle gottagutte 100% patient has got rheumatoid arthritis so what can be the management let's go step by step first one is always medications that is always there then you have got cast and slab application for undisplaced fractures surgery such as pla- plate fixations or k wire fixations for trauma decurrence disease only steroid injections can be helpful for to some extent improve agilla andre doing this surgery which is called the decurrent ligament release is very helpful because it permanently reduces the problem carpal tunnel syndrome only the injection hello as well as cutting of the transverse carpal ligament by means of surgery can be the permanent solution for carpal tunnel syndrome in rheumatoid arthritis or any degenerated joints ee tara nodi ill metal processes hakittidar nodi this is the normal how it is but this is where they have put in the metal processes that is replaced all the degenerated destroyed bone by means of metal processes so replacement or arthroplasty is also a very good option in these patients let's go to the lower limb hip pain it can happen due to tendinitis trochanteric bursitis osteonecrosis l5 s1 ivdp hip fractures fractures again very common trauma you see in the old people yen heltare sudden jari bidde bidde mele eddu nintukondru aa melinda nadita illa so how do we know ee tara problem ide athwa yake nadita illa yen tondre ide how do we assess it first of all most of the patients present with an undisplaced fracture when they present with an undisplaced fracture they think that there nothing is broken aa tara eddu nintukoltare adre nintukondu erad hejje hakad mele nadeyakagala aa erad hejje hakadaga it becomes into a displaced fracture that is when it requires or does not require surgery depending on the degree of injury and the degree of problem so yen hip fractures barbodu number one you can see in the first image here that is called the neck of femur fracture and go a little more distal this is the 
intertrochantric line between the greater trochanter and the lesser trochanter. This is an intertrochantric fracture. Almost 99% of these injuries require surgery, basically because the neck is the area where exactly all the blood supply to the femoral head is there. And whenever you have a neck fracture, the blood supply to the head is lost and the head goes into something called as an avascular necrosis. So, if the ANL is destroyed, then we will have to replace with a metal process. We will come to that later. Whereas for an intertrochantric fracture, we can fix it by means of plate or screw or a nail. Trochantric bursitis. This is more of, you know, in the late, in the early old age, about 45 years old. One day position only malgi, 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 baro tondre. You can see in this arrow here, you can see this is the greater trochanter in this area. The tro greater trochanter sutta, there will be a trochantric bursa. The trochantric bursa is inflamed. Basically, one side only malgi daga, tumma no barate. Now, left lateral or right lateral malkondaga tumma no barate. Hello, my right lateral malgi daga no barala, amel straight ad kudle no barate. All these things happen basically because of trochantric bursitis. And then avascular necrosis. As you can mm -hmm. see in this case, this is the normal femoral head. When the blood supply to it is stopped, oh, oh. in cases of fractures or smoking, drinking, long standing corticosteroid therapy, this basically affects the blood supply to the femoral head and destroys the femoral head like that. You can see the whole femoral head, the rounded, beautiful contour of the femoral head is lost and the femoral head is destroyed and it cannot maintain the normal biomechanics of the hip. So something has to be done about it. Preferably, this entire thing has to be replaced. Very important diagnosis, which everybody misses, including some of the orthopedicians. I can tell you that even I have missed this diagnosis sometimes before I got into solid practice, is the L5-S1 IVDP posing as hip pain. Bare kundeli no virate, kunde no illa kalak virate, patak's pain, radiating to the lower limb is more of a spine problem than a hip problem. So whenever you're getting a hip X-ray, always get a lumbosacral spine X-ray also. So it can tell us what level in a disc problem with your spine, disc when it is pressing on the spine, patient will tell them, specifically buttock pain. You can see the red, uh, this one over here, red color over here. These are the complaints. Especially Dina Kelsa Mardak Tondre Rala Muguskon Ban Malkondaga Novirte. Buggy Kelsa Mardaga Buggy Dag Novirala Yaddu Kutkondra Novirte. Kurchimel Kutkondu Yedwaga Novirte. Car drive Markond Kar and Yildaga Novirte. I think that it is not a hip problem. It is definitely a spine problem. So spine also has to be evaluated. Now, this is a big degeneration and destroyed hip. This is more of an infectious etiology, something like a tuberculosis hip, where you can see the entire hip is destroyed, the femoral head is destroyed, the glenoid, the acetabulum is destroyed, and you can see the entire thing is one big mass. So that is tuberculosis of the hip. So whenever you have an x-ray like this, that means there is something very, very bad in the patient. And you will have to evaluate the patient clinically, as well as get chest x-rays, get blood investigations, preferably do a Mantog test, and know if the patient has got any other systemic problems. So what can be the treatment? First is always mainstay, the drugs, medications. Second are basically, these are you now what you can see here. This is more of a procedure, especially for L5-S1 disc, we can basically do a discectomy, where you remove the L inflamed L5-S1 disc and which reduces the spine. I spoke to you about epidural steroid injections. They can also be used in IVDP issues. And coming to this, this image is very important. If there is a fracture of the femoral neck, you can either put screws and stabilize it in case the blood supply is intact, or you can replace it by means of a prosthesis like this. Because the prosthesis, basically when this fracture happens around the neck, the blood supply is cut. In some undisplaced fractures, the blood supply will still be there. But in some, most of the cases, the blood supply is cut. So replacement, something like this, will provide a permanent solution. In an intertrochantric fracture, you can use by means of a screw and plate or a nail. You can stabilize and fix the fracture. These fractures usually heal without any problem. Then there is the joint replacement, where you replace even the acetabulum, that is the socket of the hip, as well as the femoral head, which is the ball of the hip. as well as the ball of the hip. These two are quite important. These, this is one of the 
thing. Next, coming to knee pain, osteoarthritis, fractures, inflammatory arthritis, and infections. These are important causes of knee pain. So what is osteoarthritis? The same thing, as you can see in this image, a lot of these grain-like osteophytes, reduction of the joint space between the bones, destruction of the joint cartilage, and, and you can see generalized bone anatomy is also affected. So this is osteoarthritis. This is the most common cause. You do x-ray, why I have put it up so that you, know, you can diagnose in the x-ray. You can see the normal joint space. There's a black area between the femur and the tibia. Whereas here, the entire space is lost. You can see that there are sharpening of the ends where you can see the osteophytes and you see the bone is almost kissing each other. So this is an important sign of, this is the most common x-ray you see whenever a patient presents to you with osteoarthritis. This is more of a infectious or a TB knee where you can see all these black globules or black bubbles here and there. This is basically the synovial destruction and the synovitis that the disease has produced. So what could be the treatment? One is, you know, a Steroid injections could help you up to some extent, but definitely not the cure. Nowadays, I told you about the uh, PRP injections or the platelet-rich plasma injections have noted to have some effect on these patients. But patients with the X-ray, I just showed you some time back, complete destruction of the joint, complete, you know, in a very bad shape when the knee is there, you can replace it by means of metal processes as in this image where the destroyed bone is removed and it is entirely replaced by means of metal processes with a plastic liner like that and puts the patient back into form. So this is a very effective operation because it relieves the pain completely after the surgery. Ankle and foot pain, this is little rare in the elderly age group. Fractures, osteoarthritis, gout, avascular necrosis and infectious arthritis. Of course, amongst these, gout is the most common cause of ankle and foot pain. Now, this is a fracture dislocation of the ankle. This is seen more in the younger age group than the older age group because they primarily happen due to high velocity trauma. Bike hogi hordu agirodu. Younger, older patients, it's a little rare. Now, this is gout. Gout andre, collection of uric acid crystals in between the joint, between the bones of the joint. Primarily, it involves the ball of the great toe, as we say it in common man's terms, or the first metatarsophalangeal joint of the foot. It can involve other joints also, but this is the most commonest joint affected. They present with a swell, swollen red structure over here, what you can call it as a bunion. Then there is the osteoarthritis of the ankle, which is again an age-related process. This is called avascular necrosis. Happens basically with the talus bone of the ankle. When the talus bone's blood supply, just like a femoral head, is very is present in the neck of the talus, whenever there is a talus fracture or destruction or any issue like that, patient can have the blood supply getting affected and the entire bone being dead. So this is one of the most common complication of talar fractures. That is why it's called as the osteonecrosis or avascular necrosis of the ankle. What is the treatment? The most commonest surgery performed in ankle arthritis is arthrodesis. Arthrodesis, even in the foot fractures or for foot osteoarthritis or foot degenerations and all that, arthrodesis is more of a common procedure. What is arthrodesis? Arthrodesis is a technique where we fuse both the components of the bone. That is in case you have got the tibia, distal tibia bone and you have the talus like that, we remove the articular surface or the joint surface and we put both the bones together and fix it by means of screws. Like you can screws or plate or external fixator, several techniques. Now this is a by means of screws we have fixed and this is arthrodesis. Here a little more advanced procedure called arthroplasty is done where we remove the destroyed bone and all that and replace by means of a metal prosthesis. Steroid injections are useful, very rarely given, not commonly given, very rarely given because the results are not very good in ankles. Now here you can see the toe is replaced by means of a Metal processes. This is also very rarely done. Again, ankle and foot arthrodesis is more common, more cost-effective, and more useful procedure than an arthroplasty. Now, this cast has been applied commonly used in fractures, especially in elderly age group who are not fit for surgery. A cast application can be helpful. So what are the important take-home notes at the end of this lecture? Number one. Investigate clinically, biochemically, and radiologically in all the patients before arriving at a diagnosis. Be clear of your clinical findings. And if required, don't hesitate for an X-ray or a biochemical investigation. Many a times, cancers are missed in elderly due to inadequate evaluation, not just by GPs, 
not just by junior doctors even by senior doctors consultants specialists and super specialists not just in orthopedics in every possible field of the body there are places where cancers are missed hence it is not a fault by the doctor what has happened most important thing is the patient is not improving for conventional treatment do not hesitate to evaluate please hesitate but please don't hesitate do a blood investigation do an x ray if required proceed with an mri please do not hesitate to evaluate systemic conditions such as diabetes or um, hypertension or several other complications can hamper and affect the outcomes in the patient it can affect the effects of the drugs what what effects the drugs can bring about in the patient so it is important that the systemic conditions especially diabetes because diabetes itself is a spectrum of several complications and several conditions such as the liver can get affected right from the tip of your hair to the tip of your toenail everything that comes in between can be affected due to diabetes even it can affect the effects of the drugs which have been given to you to manage this particular condition hence it is very important to have a clear history of the patient whether he is affected by diabetes or not whether he is having any other symptoms is he taking medications for anything else all that has to be taken into account and that has to be managed before thinking about managing the actual injury or the actual condition the patient happens a diabetic patient is more susceptible to infection post surgery as compared to that of a non diabetic patient hence handling and managing diabetes and even conditions such as anemia or any other such underlying systemic conditions is important in management of orthopedic problems all conditions do not require surgical intervention non surgical intervention in terms of medications intra articular injections cast slab etc might be useful in management of some injuries what is the most important thing in management of any injury or fracture is first you should know what are the requirements of the patient an 80 year old man with a very bad comminuted distal radius fracture can be managed with a cast provided his requirements are minimum a 50, a 30 year old man who is completely bedridden who has got several neurological problems who has lot of other issues has a very bad fracture of the ankle which is not posing an emergency can be managed non surgically as any way the patient is not going to walk it is important to tailor the treatment according to the patient's requirement rather than the patient's age or the patient's cosmetic correction a 65 year old man with all the systems being right who is a jeweler or a writer by occupation will require a normal wrist to do his work so in such patient i would not hesitate to do a surgery rather than trying to convince him for a cast rehabilitation is as important as the treatment what is instituted if the patient has undergone surgery or the patient has undergone any form of treatment it is very essential that we rehabilitate them we provide them adequate physiotherapy we adequately mobilize them adequately get them out of the bed adequately teach them how to handle their day to day activities try to push them into normalcy as much as we can hence rehabilitation is a very very important part of management of aches and pains in elderly in elderly age groups treatment plan differs from patient to patient what i just told a 65 year old man who is fit and active who is some even nowadays we have 65 year old athletes 65 year old models those who are there they would prefer to have a normal ankle or a normal wrist they will not hesitate two times to undergo surgery such patients would definitely undergo surgery a younger patient who is having lot of other neurological and other such complications who is not fit for surgery might be satisfied with a cast hence management of the treatment or management of the patient according to requirement or require according to the demand is more important than managing the injury as so so hence one of the most important complication of adulthood of the old age is osteoporosis managing osteoporosis adequately is very important that might be in terms of zoledronic acid or pomidronic acid injections which are called bisphosphonates or by means of oral calcium and vitamin d3 or giving parathormone injections all these things can be housed for the for any other talk because talking on osteoporosis itself is a long lecture and nothing can replace care and compassion finally it is the doctor to patient trust doctor to patient understanding doctor to patient care is finally the thing that brings about the effect 
it doesn't matter how many medications how many injections or hundreds of surgeries that you can do skillfully but finally what matters between the doctor to patient or rather how much does the patient trusts you is what finally brings about the ultimate care and the ultimate treatment and the ultimate result it is not any of the above pharmacotherapeutics or any of the surgical management the final thing would be my request to you to kindly counsel all your elderly patients to take the covid vaccination as soon as possible to prevent and to resist the spread of this pandemic thank you very much thank you sir for a informative session now i would request the participants to unmute and ask your questions directly to the presenter very good presentation sir thank you sir uh, regarding uh, traction in ivdp yes sir what act what actually the indication for traction because some patient will get the result yes some patient will not get the result what is the actual indication for traction sir ivdp uh, what is the most important thing is there is ivdp doesn't present as a single problem if the ivdp is in a younger age group they tend to improve very well with traction and compared to the elderly age group what i am intending to tell you is whenever the patient has got a disc or a disc problem there is a protective mechanism in the body where there is a spasm of the paraspinal muscles which produces the pain more than the disc pain they complain of pain on either sides of the spine that is primarily due to the spasm what the paraspinal muscles have produced a traction will only relieve the paraspinal spasm and will not manage the ivdp ivdp management has to be done separately by means of either oral medications good physiotherapy or in some case epidural injections bar surgery so whenever we have got there are several types of disc uh, prolapses either it can be a disc bulge protrusion extrusion or sequestration they are the classification sequestration is the highest level of disc bulge so in case it is a disc bulge only andre just balloon tara the disc is just mildly pressing on the spine the symptoms of all four of them can be the same the patient can have a sequestration and have no pain and the patient who is having a disc bulge can have lot of pain so any patient who is having just a disc bulge will do very well with physiotherapy and traction as compared to that with a sequestration or a uh, anything else like that and in case there is no paraspinal pas spasm the the traction is not going to help them anyways such cases physiotherapy or oral medications and some case you know after an mri a steroid injection or to the epidural space would help them much folds better as compared to that of physiotherapy matte pain sir the biggest problem with pain is it's a matter of perception somebody who has no injuries might tell that you know as soon as you touch there is a lot of pain somebody whose leg is totally cut off also will tell i have no pain so it's a matter of perception so that differs from patient to patient so some patients will be satisfied with minimal treatment some patients those who are perception of pain is very higher they will that there is a lot of pain so that that is that is a difference in this matter i hope i have answered your question if you want any clarification you can let me know sir hello how do you distinguish between a hairline fracture hello uh, how do you distinguish between a hairline fracture and a actual fracture because a layman wouldn't know people like us wouldn't know what is exactly a hairline fracture a hairline fracture is a fracture which is as thin as a hair and uh, the only way to diagnose this is uh, you will have to have good clinical acumen along with a good x-ray finding the perfect way of diagnosing it would be to do a ct scan but in india most of them cannot afford a ct scan so there is no point doing it unnecessarily i would rather tell a orthopedician or a clinician or general practitioner who has got good clinical acumen and good uh, a uh, radiological understanding will be able to diagnose it more fluently laymen some people those who have had experience working in the hospitals will be able to tell it apart from that i would i would it's a very i, I wouldn't uh, comment much on that okay thank you so there Hello, is sir? a few questions in the chat box shall yes, i read sir. it out yes please 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 madam uh how to manage plantar fasciitis plantar fasciitis again it's a good question because plantar fasciitis is a very common condition especially in the ladies 
those who have gained a lot of weight because this is not very common in elderly age group so i did not use it in the talk this is more used in the more common in the younger age group especially the ones those who have suddenly grown fat due to thyroid problems due to pregnancy due to other systemic conditions cushing syndrome and all that the and also with bad footwear sold shoes he he shoes with high heels which is quite a matter of fashion nowadays so high heels or you know uh, tight fitting shoes ill fitting shoes a common cause of uh, plantar fasciitis in these particular patients so the first step in management of these plantar fasciitis would be to advise them they commonly complain that they have got lot of foot pain when they get up in the morning and walk on the ground belige edd koodle nov barutte kal bari gal nelad mele especially chali galadalli chandi nelad mele atho vadde nelad mele atho cold nelad mele kal urut koodle nov nov agutte koorgu a tara cold areas ac il malkondre nov agutte this is the main complaint so what can be done first thing dip ask them to dip their leg into a bucket of warm water preferably mixed with a little bit of salt and start mobilizing their ankle up and down there are some plantar facial uh, tensioning exercises which are very useful in these particular patients using a proper uh, good footwear in terms of mcr footwear or a multi coated rubber footwear could be very useful in these patients to help them mobilize but other uh, improvement bandilla andre first uh, you would ask them to lose weight and you know try to have a healthier lifestyle a uh, steroid injection would go a long way in management of these conditions and in the final stages anyway a plant surgical plantar facial release can be the ultimate uh, way of managing so next one is medications for osteoarthritis and carpal tunnel syndrome osteoarthritis uh, medications basically diacetin is noted to have some effect in management of these uh, conditions use of collagen type 2 um uh, supplements can be useful in some patients use of physiotherapy and analgesics could be useful but osteoarthritis is again as i told you it's an aging process what has to happen will happen only thing is the complication of pain due to it can be postponed by another 5 years or 6 years so a healthy lifestyle weight loss could definitely help you a lot to have a pain free knee joint a steroid injection again is very useful especially in knee osteoarthritis it is noted to have the best result finally in case with lot of deformities lot of destruction of the joint joint replacement is the final cure medications of course analgesic